Hello, this is Eric Miskell with EMS Now. My pleasure to sit with Joel Sketchfield again from Co Young America. Joel, it's good to see you. How's the summer going for you? Yeah, good to see you as well, Eric. It is going fast, right? Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> when, when does summer not go fast? Uh, right. But it's just amazing. And uh, it's hard to believe. Yeah, we're, we're going to yeah. We're right around the corner from from August and back to school and and uh you know before we know it it's uh it's fall show season and and then it's holidays and and then we start again and it's, yeah, it's rinse uh, and repeat right oh so. my goodness it's just just amazing but uh yeah. but the year's going well so we're very happy about that and uh you know excited about the second half there's uh a lot going on out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe read between the lines. Uh, you know, our uh, election situation should uh, should get very interesting. And uh, you know, we're you know obviously keeping an eye on how that affects uh, our market, right? And uh, in particular, you know, through the balance of this year and into twenty twenty five. So, uh, lots to uh, lots, lots to look forward to. Lots to yeah. lots to keep your eye on and uh, yeah. adjust accordingly, but right? Yeah, and I want to pick up on on one of those things. That's why I want to talk is really on the semicon industry side mm -hmm. of it, right? Because mm -hmm. I know that 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 is certainly an area that that Co Young, uh, you know, works with as well. But you know, I think of it in terms of you know, in this country, we had the Chips Act, fifty three mm -hmm. billion dollars that was been earmarked in the, and what I've heard um, is that that initial fifty three has triggered an additional. I think it's. I heard it size at 462 billion in private funds that have also come in in the United States to develop kind of the semiconductor and the ecosystem around it. So right. what are you seeing in regards to semiconductor growth? So great question. And uh, it is it is a space that we are, uh, I'll say, migrating more heavily into. We, we have been uh, in the system and package world for many years. And we work with uh, really a who's who of of the uh, semicon players that are that are out there, very global, very very powerful, big name, uh, very recognizable. Uh, they are very trusting of us and our technology for their uh, system and package applications. And and again, just to kind of paraphrase what that's all about is really we see that as the kind of the uh, the. The, the halfway point, right, between SMT and Simicon. Uh, system and package is, is tying those two technologies together where we're basically combining uh, SMT with, say, flip chip, BGA, flip chip, CSP, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, direct die attach with, with wire bonds into a, uh, into a, a small package, a, a system within a package. And, and so our, our technology has been very, uh, well suited to address the needs of of that particular sector of the semicon world uh very well and and for some time so you know now we migrate into the wafer level and in particular the uh, the fan out wafer level side of things with some additional uh technology and and system development and you know we're we're really again uh in a position where there's just not a lot of that here yet, right? So, you know, you, you mentioned the Chips Act and the money, and I saw another 1.6 billion um, this week was was released, yeah. and it, it's uh, it's happening. It, it's certainly happening, but I think it's going a little bit slower uh, than some thought. Uh, and you know, think about it. it you just can't you just can't do this overnight. I mean, this is this is very complex initiative. It's it's. Uh, you know, very little of it was here at all uh, when we started this this Chips Act initiative uh, not long ago, and so you know we're looking at a, a market size right now for our technology, which is really focused on on the back end, okay, packaging uh, of roughly uh, twenty five to thirty accounts total, uh, OSATs, uh, outsource assembly and test, which are the folks that that actually do the the packaging effort right so uh wafer is complete fab is complete lithography is done kind of equate it to uh the equivalent uh, in our smt world of uh, you know here's the bare pcb fr4 traces pads you know put it in the etching machine at the front of the line and here we go so we take this completed wafer and we hand that to the osat as opposed to the to the ems 
uh, company with the circuit board and and they do their thing right they they basically uh, start the packaging process whether it's a uh, a fan out application uh, utilizing you know uh redistribution and, and reconstituted uh layers and in, in uh, uh formats uh or or fan in where we're you know we're bumping we're balling uh and we're inspecting those bumps and balls and 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 shiny dye and and all these things uh, for for first of all all of the metrology initiatives right the uh, size of the ball height all the all the things we've already, always done in full 3D right true 3D uh, uh, micro cracks uh, chipping uh, form material and then all the positional so we're, we're basically translating that technology uh, from the standard uh, SMT slash now system and package world into the into the wafer level world. Uh, so when you say how's it going, it's you know, we're we're peeling an onion. That's that's really what we're doing, and we're 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 finding out who our our new market is. We're we're going to conferences and shows and meeting those individuals uh, best we can, and trying to position ourselves, you know, with our current technology uh, to partner. Uh, and then also look to the future for what else we can do in that space and, and what needs are there that are not currently being fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, so in that sense, and I hear what you're talking about, how you're kind of expanding within that space, is there, other than like in the, 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 the system and package and what have you, are there other ways that you're expanding your offering within the semicon world? So basically, uh, within the within the system and package and, and i say system and package it's it's obviously a general term and and again it, it kind of define it as a hybrid between smt and 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 semicon where we have a little bit of both uh at work we you know, we've made advancements to our technology that that serves that particular sector which is our meister series uh the meister s for you know, paste inspection and meister d and d plus for the the standard uh, or, or traditional AOI uh, inspection uh, applications. And how have we done that? Well, we, we realized that you know, as the feature sizes uh, are reduced and things get smaller and smaller as they, they do when you get deeper and deeper into the semicon world, you know, we need a higher level of magnification. Uh, so we've done that. We've, we've, we've gone from a 12 megapixel uh, either 15 or 10 micron uh, configuration on our Meister series tools to now a 25 megapixel camera uh, with a three and a half micron resolution. So we've, uh, yeah, we've given ourselves the opportunity now to obviously address the, uh, the needs of, of this, this space as they continue to grow and, and we'll continue to, we'll continue to make advances in that area, certainly. Uh, but then, Again, with the the new system, the ZenStar, uh, which is a, a true wafer handling, wafer inspection tool uh, for those for those uh, fan in fan out applications, uh, we we enclose the the technology into a basically a class ten clean room environment, where uh, now uh, we're able to. Uh, mesh with the the handling system of the uh the providers the, the the manufacturers that are that are doing that wafer level uh manufacturing uh, application uh through the use of a a foop uh, which is a, a basically a front opening universal uh device that that carries the the wafer and transports them throughout the the facility you see these overhead uh uh uh, transport mechanisms when you go into these facilities, but basically uh, the food comes in, we uh, remove the wafer with a robotic arm. Again, class 10 uh, clean room, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically uh, no more than, than uh, 10 particles of no more than 0.5 micron uh, size in, a, in, a, in a, uh, a cubic foot. So, you know, very, very, uh, intense and, and, and high end from that perspective. Uh, but again, now we're, now we're doing, using that same metrology, that same inspection capability, the 3D Moray uh, mm -hmm. with, with the, the same uh, configuration, camera configuration resolutions that I, that I talked about to 
perform inspections on the on the wafer itself for all those things I described, you know, balling, bumping, uh, you know, roughly uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of uh, 50 to 70 micron features, uh, 20 micron uh, spacings from device to device. Uh, again, uh, chip cracks, uh, 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 anything reflective, uh, form material, and all the positions. So we've we've basically taken the, the technology and now put it into a format where we can utilize all of those all those very proven capabilities uh, in the advanced packaging uh, wafer level uh, assembly process. Gotcha, gotcha. That sounds like a lot. Wow. <laughs> 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 it is a lot. And, and then, like I said, you know, we, we don't really have a market for that here yet. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's being utilized still in Asia today. Yeah. Uh, and we are, so as, as part of what our part in this as Co Young America is again, finding, finding places where this will eventually be needed, yeah. right. Where this, where this wafer level fan out wafer level uh, application will be utilized. Uh, and in the meantime, we're, we're, we're doing that by, uh, engaging with these OSATs for our current Meister technology and and developing relationships and, and getting a, a footprint established, I guess, yeah. uh, is a good way to put that. Yeah, but and I'd limited. assume... Still limited now, still still, right. still limited in terms of... And I would assume then that, market. that you're tracking, you know, kind of the reshoring, the nearshoring, whatever you want to call it, efforts, and what is going to be migrating back over here as that, e that ecosystem evolves. So what are you seeing in, in that regards? As well, far as the gear shoring in the companies, yeah, I, I think you know I mentioned that we're we're a little bit behind. Is probably not the right word. Things maybe are not going as fast as some thought they would, uh, and I I attribute that primarily to infrastructure, right? So, you know, we there's there's things we have to have readily available here to be able to to move forward with this this packaging initi initiative uh when you start stacking the, the whole the whole packaging concept is is you know we're going up now right instead of out we we've we've uh, exceeded moore's law we we need to we need to uh, to basically uh uh build you know two and a half d 3d uh heterogeneous uh integration uh and with all of that uh you know we need substrate manufacturing beyond silicon uh for the, the various other layers that would be involved there uh, to, to exist here. That, that's just one example, but, mm -hmm. uh, but there's other things as well. And I think, I think that to a degree is something that from a reshoring, nearshoring perspective needs to be really accelerated. That, that needs to be the, the front end piece, chicken or the egg kind of thing, right? Uh, but you're, you're hearing uh, obviously Amcor now, uh, one, of the, one of the largest OSATs mm -hmm. in the world, um, American company is going to start manufacturing in the U.S. Uh, packaging, I should say, in the U.S., which is which is all done in Asia now. So that's certainly a positive sign, and we we fully expect that you know we'll see a lot more of that with the likes of uh, people like Intel, uh, Micron, Texas Instruments, Samsung, some of these other very large companies, even global foundries that that are are you know basically doing. Uh, foundry and fab work here uh, to a, a large scale and, and currently, you know, sending those completed uh, fab wafers back to Asia for, for packaging uh, processing, starting to do that here. So that's, that's certainly uh, something that we're, we're keeping our eye on as well. Okay. Good, good. Now, I know that you've been attending uh, some conferences, some shows here recently, ECTC and, mm -hmm. and Semicon West in particular, what what are you seeing and hearing at, at these conferences in regards to this whole semicon movement? Well, there's a lot of excitement. Certainly, uh, there's a lot of uh, anticipation and and discussion about uh, you know where this is going and 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 how fast we can actually make it happen. Um, the the interesting thing about this industry today here in the U.S. in particular. Uh, or maybe North America is is, uh, is is a better way to put it, uh, is again, there's there's so little of it that is existing right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So the shows, the conferences, the conferences seem to be very um, focused on specific 
pieces, which is good, right? So ECTC is, is a packaging conference. There's various others out there run by, by SEMI and, and some of the other, uh, some of the other organizations that, that, that are, uh, very centric to, to this, to this space. Um, the SEMICON West show was interesting to me, uh, because it really incorporated, you know, we're, we're an inspection company, right? We want to talk to, we want to talk to people, OSATs, that, mm-hmm. that have need for our inspection tools uh, at that at the wafer level or system and package level, uh, and just like we do at, at at Apex for the SMT world, right? But again, there aren't that many people uh, out there yet doing that here, right? So so you know the the traffic is not it, it's it's there, but it's there in a very kind of diluted fashion, right? I saw everything from. Uh, you know, click clack valves like we see at the assembly technology show uh, to 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 basically plastic tubing for, for and piping for for moving chemicals and and uh, you know regeneration systems and all of this infrastructure within a plant, and and here we are with our inspection technology. So I I, I would like to see that become a little bit more focused, and I think it will over time, where maybe we have a a packaging area at at Semicon West, let's say, just for example. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think as we move forward, we can, we can certainly uh, justify that. So just an observation that it's very, we're, I think everybody's trying to figure it out, right? Everybody's trying to figure out what's the best way to, you know, to get this going. And, uh, you know, and that includes trade shows and conferences and, and all of the rest. Um, you know, there's a lot of activity at the university level going on right now, partnering with the industry, we have universities looking for systems, um, you know, that I think industry is, is looking to use them to help develop processes, et cetera. And you see, you see facilities being built in the backyards of, 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 of some of these universities, obviously, you know, Arizona state and, and all of the content in Phoenix, um, we've got some things going on, you know, between Ohio state and, and Intel with their, with their, mm-hmm. uh, you know, their, their large expansion in Columbus, uh, uh, Purdue uh, had the, uh, the the partnership going with Skywater. I'm not sure if that's gonna that's gonna continue completely, uh, but then SK Hynex is is coming into their to their research park as well. So you see that going on in uh, in a lot of different areas. Um, but again, it's uh, you know we we got to get the infrastructure in place, and I think you know once that starts to happen, uh, then then this thing will grow at a at a more expeditious rate. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, Because I think about, you know, the Semicon thing was originally about kind of supply chain security and concerns and within more regulated industries, Mm -hmm. military obviously being the primary one for the government, Mm -hmm. but the government buys in so many areas too, right? So I think while that was the toehold, it's inevitably and hopefully will expand into other sectors as well that may be less regulated. So so where do you see the market going over the next few years and and how do you plan to address that growth? Well, again, I think I think we're going to see a a slow and steady uh growth within within the space uh as uh you know the Amcors get their facilities online and and more and more uh, OSAT activity uh, an expansion it takes place. Uh, now we, we've got a, a place to to bring the business right that that mm-hmm. of of packaging, which is now being done in 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 Asia, right? So the market is there; it exists. We just need to build in the capabilities to to be able to do it here, including the infrastructure. And I think once that once that starts to materialize, and it's it's going to be a, an incremental growth process, mm-hmm. then then we'll see more and more of the the actual you know, packaging effort uh, returning and uh, or or not leaving <laughs> in some cases, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, which is which is what we're looking for for yeah. for all the reasons you described. It's it's national security, it's supply chain, it's 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 all of the above, and uh, yeah. you know having having more control uh, in this very uh, convoluted world that we live in now with a lot of uncertainty is is very important so um but there's a lot of there's a lot of steps right we we haven't even talked about the the people situation i mean we know we have that 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 situation on the smt side it's going to be just as complicated on the on the semicon side and uh, it's it is more automated uh so there's fewer people but it's a specialization and um 
and and you know you you build these facilities the size of the facilities that places like you know intel and tsmc and and, yeah. and others are building it it takes a lot of people so yeah. uh that's that's another trick that's another every conference i go to you know workforce development is is a big issue and how yeah. do we and again i think that's a, a, a very uh primary reason yeah. for these companies uh engaging with universities basically trying to grow their own talent right and then keep right. them you know just just walk off campus and right into the into into our our plant into our yeah. semicon manufacturing center you know it's interesting when you say that the specialization because it, it, i remember when i think it was tsmc down in arizona said that they couldn't even the construction of the yeah. the, the, the facility was so specialized they felt they had to bring people in from Taiwan to oversee that and kind of train the local workers to be able yeah. to. So we've even potentially lost the capability of building the high tech facilities and then let alone staff the what's going inside those buildings. Yeah, there's just a lot of layers to it. And and we know that that the overall uh, pool of, of labor out there seems to be less than than what it was pre-COVID for, for various reasons. And uh the reality is it doesn't feel like that's going to change anytime soon. So we're going to have to deal with that on, on both sides, uh, SMT, Semicon, and, and all, all phases of manufacturing, which again, you know, we've talked about in the past, more automation, more AI, et cetera, et cetera. It's a, it's a reality. And, uh, yeah. and it's a, it's a challenge. It's a challenge uh, certainly that we have to address to be able to yeah. make this happen. Yeah. Let me, I just wanted to ask kind of in, in, in wrapping with you here, I always enjoy speaking to you because I always learn something. So, but as far as the general, Hopefully it's something useful, Eric. Hopefully no, it's something useful. No, it really useful. is. That's why I love my job is, you know, I get to talk to people like you and I get these insights from, and then, you know, I try to create my own thoughts about it. But sure. the general evolution of inspection equipment, you know, as technology has gotten more advanced, as we, you've been talking, parts are getting smaller, right? Things are getting faster. You've mentioned having to improve the cameras and, you know, all these things. You know, how is how does that develop? I'm, I go into facilities and I see new equipment, I see older equipment, right? And the older equipment generally... Uh, but as you have the new technologies and the new developments in there, is there a natural evolution there? Is it new versus upgrading is it software is it you know over hardware just generally speaking for 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 your space how does that work so in our world it, it's always really stemmed from what dr co calls voice of the customer right they they are the ones that are that are giving us the uh really the direction on on where we need to be going and, and we've been very fortunate as a company uh from the very early early stages of, of the creation of, of Co Young, uh, back to the inception, of being able to work with some very high end, high power, leading edge companies in in that regard, and what that means is we get pulled into conversations very early, uh, years in some cases before they're ready to unveil the next level of technology. And we get to see what that roadmap looks like. And when we, we, we then obviously have the opportunity to create our capabilities or capabilities to address that around that. And when we do that, everybody wins because we're not specializing for any particular customer. So it's always, it's always been that way. And it, and it still is, we still have, we still have great relationships with those kinds of folks, as well as everybody down to the, you know, one machine, mom and pop, uh, you know, next level up from a from a from a garage shop application, and and you know all of the all of the input matters. So you know we collect that, we we put that through a, a product planning process, and then we decide how to move forward um, in terms of what comes next. Uh, obviously, software is 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 a major. Uh, piece to all of this today in terms of the the evolution uh capability wise um in terms of uh, and then that really addresses more so the, the smart factory initi initiative eric right and the addressing of the again the, the the people the labor issue that we that we touched on here just a few minutes ago it's got to be more intuitive it's got to be it's got to be less human reliant right whether that's programming whether that's understanding the data whether that's creating actionable uh, it, uh events or or even to the extent of completely controlling 
the process automatically, like like our KPO tools do for both the, the printer and the, and a mounter. So that's that's a huge piece. Um, you know, we're still getting a lot of requests for uh, taking the the through hole initiative further, strictly at the at the print circuit board level, and then more and more back end uh, applications on the I'm, I'm talking on the SMT side now, right? Yeah. So you know, there's 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 still things to be done there. There's still um, applications to be addressed, you know, more modular uh, mm -hmm. uh, probes, if you will, that can be affixed to uh, something in the plant that already exists, uh, a, a robot, a, uh, uh, you know, a, a conveyor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Not necessarily a complete turnkey machine, let's say, right? So more on the sensor side. So yeah, there's, there's, there's things that are, that are continually, uh, evolving and and things that we're looking at and uh things that we in some cases have in the works currently but uh but certainly uh you know software and and now the move into the uh the semicon initiative are, are very very high on our list yeah good good no that that's interesting yeah and you're right you mentioned through hole every time i go out i'm still amazed how much there <laughs> is right? and, and the challenge is sometimes the volumes are so low that it's hard to justify an, an automated solution right so yeah. that's that, that's that's more manual still but you can just see with with the factory of the future lights out whatever you want to call that right it's going to have to be addressed somehow so yeah yeah you're right i mean i, I remember I, I started in this industry in 1986 uh and uh i remember hearing you know this is these were the early days of surface mount oh this is this is it man this is the future See those through hole machines over there, those automatic inserters and sequencers, yeah. those are going to be gone in five years, right? Yeah. And I was in a plant uh, just within this last year, a uh, small shop in the Midwest where uh, they had these sequencers running like, uh, boy, that just reminded me of my manufacturing days. And and that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> still chunking away with axial yeah. and radial parts. And yeah, it's, you're right. It's not, it's not. It's not yet gone away. Let's put it that way. It doesn't. Right. Doesn't seem exactly. Bad. Right. Well, good. Well, listen, um, I appreciate your time as always. Uh, we're My heading pleasure, into, Eric. You said at the beginning, we're heading into the fall show season. So I'm sure I will be seeing you at some of the shows this fall. There are quite a few coming up on the agenda. There are. We'll be at uh, uh, SMTA Guadalajara, first and foremost, in early September, and uh, followed by uh, SMTA International in, uh, in in Chicago, the end of October. Uh, we're excited for the show to come back to Chicago. We think that'll be a, a very good thing. And, and Guadalajara is growing, so always excited about that. And then Electronica? Yeah, yeah, the European shows. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still work to be done, right? <laughs> yes, there is. There's lots going on. Lots going on. Joel, I appreciate you as always. Uh, stay My safe pleasure. out there. Happy travels, and I look forward to speaking to you again sometime. Thank you. Likewise, yes. Safe travels Thanks. and uh, enjoy that November trip. We'll, uh, we'll talk before then. But uh, we will for sure. Again, thank always, you. Always good. Always good to Take talk. Take care, to you. Joel.